Okay guys, before we get started, this is what I'm using in the video. I have a Raspberry Pi W0, an SD card reader, a 16 gigabyte SD card, power supply for the Pi, a PS4 controller, and a keyboard. You're also going to need your HDMI and USB adapter for the Pi Zero. All right, so now that you have all of your hardware gathered up, it's time to get the software we need. Now I'm using Windows 10, but this image flasher will work on Linux, Mac, or Windows. So no matter what you're using, you'll be able to flash an image to an SD card. Let's go ahead and open up Chrome. All these links are in the description. First thing we're gonna need is this image right here. This is for the Pi Zero W right here. This is RetroPie 4.1.20. Go ahead and download it, double click, download, download anyway. It's gonna download here. Now I've already placed mine on my desktop. Next thing we're gonna need is Etcher. Now you can always use Win32 Disk Imager if you're used to that, but Etcher works on Linux, Mac, or Windows, and it's a really good application. So I'm just gonna click the drop down menu. I'm on Windows 10. I have a 64 bit operating system here, so I'm going to install the 64 bit version. It's gonna download, shouldn't take too long. When Etcher is finished downloading, let's go ahead and install it. And click finish. It's gonna start Etcher for us. Now I already have my image on the desktop here. If you downloaded this, go to properties here. When you download this image, it might look like this, .gz. All you need to do is remove that .gz, press enter, make sure it is an .img. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my SD card into my PC using a 16 gigabyte old Samsung, it works great. I'm gonna select my image and that image is going to be this on the desktop. So I'll go to desktop, RetroPie 4.1.20. Double click. Now for your drive, make sure you have chosen your SD card. Mine is a 16 gigabyte card. I know this is my card. Triple check if you have to. Continue. And we're just gonna click flash. Etcher is going to flash the RetroPie image to the SD card for us. When it's done, it's going to validate the files and tell us when it's completely finished. After it's done, we're just going to take the SD card out of the PC, place it in a Raspberry Pi 0W, and boot it up. Give it a little bit of time. This could take a while depending on how fast your SD card is. Okay, when you're done flashing, it's time to move to the Raspberry Pi 0W. You might get a warning like this, that's just because it formatted the SD card in a way that Windows can't read it. Take our SD card out of the PC, plug it into the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now first thing I'm gonna do is set up my Wi-Fi. So initially, I'm going to plug my keyboard into my single USB adapter. If you have a USB hub, you can plug in your keyboard and your controller at the same time. But right now I'm gonna set up my keyboard first, just so I can get in and set up my Wi-Fi network. That's gonna allow us to transfer ROMs over network. Let's move over there now. All right guys, so like I said, I'm gonna set up my keyboard first and the only reason I'm doing this is so I can set up my Wi-Fi connection. I also have a tutorial on setting up a PS3 controller. It works the same exact way on the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Link is in the description. First thing I'm going to do is take my keyboard and hold A. For my D-pad, I'm just going to use my arrow keys, up, down, left, right. I'm going to use Q for start, W for select, A for A, S for B. All we're really going to need is that start and A button and our directional pad. So from here, if you want, you can just hold down. This is gonna do is skip all of these because we really don't need any of these just to set up Wi-Fi. And I'm going to press A when it gets to okay. Give it a few seconds because the Pi Zero is very slow. So from here, you might notice we don't have any emulators on the screen. That's because we need to add some ROMs, but first thing we need to do is set up Wi-Fi. Now you can always add ROMs using a USB stick. I've also made a video on that but I like transferring from my Windows PC over my network 
to the Raspberry Pi. What I'm going to do is enter the RetroPie menu here by pressing A because I mapped my keyboard to A. I'm going to scroll down to Wi-Fi. I'm going to press A. Now when we're inside of this menu, our keyboard's going to act a little bit different than how we set it up. Pretty much just like a real computer, our arrow keys are going to navigate and our enter key is going to select whatever we want. I want to connect to Wi-Fi network. I'm going to press enter on number one. Now I'm going to connect to one of my networks here. Obviously I'm not going to put my password in right now to show you guys, but go ahead and put your password in, click OK, and we'll be able to exit the Wi-Fi setup. Click enter. If you successfully connected, it'll say you're connected. From here, we can use our right and left arrow keys. I want to go to exit. We're just going to exit that menu. Okay, now that we're connected to our Wi-Fi network, we need to add some ROMs from our PC. Now, I can't tell you exactly where to get ROMs, but if you do a quick Google search, you should be able to find everything you need. The Raspberry Pi Zero W is not going to run PlayStation 1 very well. N64, you're going to have to stick with NES, SNES, some Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, but it's a really nice setup for a $10 PC. I connected my Raspberry Pi to the same exact network that my PC is connected to. You must set it up that way in order for our computer and a Raspberry Pi to communicate. They need to be on the same network. Let's go ahead and move back to the PC, and I'm going to show you how to connect and install some ROMs. All right, so now it's time to connect to our Raspberry Pi Zero W over network. If you go down to your Wi-Fi or your Ethernet, make sure you're on the same network that you connected your Pi to. Now, like I said, I can't show you where to get ROMs, but if you search Google, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to find anything. In here, I have a bunch of different ROMs. Right now, I'm only going to add a few Genesis games and a few SNES games, but you should get the hang of it by watching this. Let's go ahead and connect to the Pi. Go ahead and open up a file explorer. Now, this is the stock file explorer that's built into Windows. This will work on Windows 7 or Windows 10 or Windows 8.1. At the very top, this is called the Quick Access Bar. What we need to do is go up to the top and type in backslash, backslash, RetroPie, all capital. Press enter. Give it a second, and you should connect to your Raspberry Pi as long as it's on the same network. From here, we have four folders, BIOS, configs, ROMs, and splash screens. We're going to focus on our ROMs folder. Go ahead and open it up. I'm going to snap it to the side just for easy access. I'm going to go ahead and snap my ROMs that I have on my PC over on the left-hand side. So on the right-hand side over here, this is my RetroPie SD card. If you look down the list, there are a lot of emulators here, but the Pi Zero does not play a lot of these emulators very well. Like I said, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Genesis, NES, SNES, you should be able to get away with a lot of those. Very simple to do on my RetroPies SD card. I'm just going to open up the SNES ROMs folder. And I'm going to grab a few ROMs and throw them on over. So I'll just grab a few of these. They're going to transfer over network. So I just transferred four SNES games to my Raspberry Pi's SD card. We're going to go back on the Raspberry Pi. Back in my ROMs folder. There are two folders we can drop Genesis in, now Mega Drive or Genesis. I'm in a state, so I use the Genesis. I'm just going to put a few Genesis games in here. I just added five Sega Genesis games to my Raspberry Pi's SD card. I'm going to go back. Now it's going to work the same exact way. You want Game Gear, you put your Game Gear ROMs in here. You want Game Boy, you put your Game Boy, Game Boy games in here. That's all there is to it. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, MSX. I'm going to leave links to the RetroPie Wiki page if you need to know what needs a BIOS 
what doesn't need a BIOS, what file format these use, you can search the RetroPie Wiki page and find everything you'll ever need to know. Now we're going to move back to the Raspberry Pi Zero. All right, now that I'm back at my Raspberry Pi, I'm going to go ahead and set up my controller before I reboot. Now we only have one port on the Raspberry Pi Zero unless you're using a USB hub. I have my keyboard plugged in. What I'm gonna do is trick the Raspberry Pi into setting up my other controller. I'm gonna press my Q button, which I set up as start on my keyboard. I'm gonna go down to configure input and I'm gonna press A. I'm gonna press A one more time. I'm gonna unplug my keyboard. I'm going to plug in my controller. So I just plugged in my PS4 controller. I'm gonna go ahead and hold my X button and I'm just gonna set my controller up. So my D-pad, up, down, left, right. My start, select. Now this really depends on how you wanna set your controller up. My A button is my X, my B button is my square, my X button is my circle, and my Y button is my triangle. Totally personal preference, it's up to you how you wanna set it up. Left shoulder is your upper left shoulder button. Right shoulder is your upper right shoulder button. Left trigger, right trigger, left thumb is your analog stick, you press it in, right thumb, right analog stick, press it in, left analog, up, down, left, right, right analog, up, down, left, right. Press your X button or whatever you set up as A when you get to OK. Wait a few seconds because the Pi Zero is slow. OK, so now I'm going to scroll to quit and I'm gonna restart emulation station. Yes, really restart. When we restart, we should have our SNES logo on the front screen and our Mega Drive or Genesis. Press yes. And there we have it. Mega Drive is the same as Genesis. I've made a video on how to change this logo. Here's Super Nintendo and our RetroPie. So I'm gonna go into Super Nintendo. Now, if you run into a problem, Go ahead and search YouTube, type your question in, and then type ETA Prime behind it, and I've probably made a video on it. Now I'm gonna leave a link in the description on how to set up your Bluetooth controller, how to add ROMs over USB, and a couple other videos, but I have made hundreds of RetroPie videos. It's very simple as soon as you do it a couple of times. Go ahead and start Mega Man X. And we're now running Mega Man X. So that's it, guys. That's how you install RetroPie on the Raspberry Pi Zero W, set up your Wi Fi, and add a few games. Let me back out of here. Now you can exit pretty much any game by pressing Start and Select on your controller at the same time. So I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. If you have any questions, the first place to look is the RetroPie wiki page. Second place is to do a search of your question, followed by ETA Prime on YouTube. Somebody else may have covered this also. You can go ahead and check their video out if you'd like to. Like always, thanks for watching.